I don't I don't know where I would be if I didn't like get you know appreciate art whether it was music or or painting or drawing or whatever it is you know um, I couldn't imagine life without it so much of of life is inside the circle art is by design outside the circle and I think that um, I think it's it, I think art affects you know it affects the mind in ways that are they may not be immediately evident but um, it's important to, to sort of flex that muscle education is a great equalizer right because it's like okay we're all you know, some, some some people are born with a silver spoon, some people are born into poverty, whatever it is, but education is the thing that can equalize us all because we all get a good education. Um, we're all gonna be starting from the same point and we'll all be armed with the same tools that we need to sort of get through life. And I think that the more we spend on, on education now, then the less we'll have to spend on you know, punishing criminals later on, you know, um, because it's the education is a great equalizer and art is, has to be such a huge part of that. So much of school is like, you know, you're taking physics or you're taking algebra and you're like, you're like, when am I ever going to use this? Hmm. And, and to the kids watching at home, you never will. But, but, the th but art and, and appreciating thinking outside the box comes in handy so much, so much more than algebra or physics or biology, or whatever. I, I, from experience, I speak from that. You know that 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 the things I learned in in school, you know, some of it came in handy, but most of it didn't. And it was the life experience and, and the sum of all its parts, you know, that um, that helped me get along. You know, so. But I think everyone needs to have a chance at that education. Because without having that, I think you're really at a disadvantage. Some people don't like to be challenged, you know. So if you if you art is challenging in a way, because I think I think some people that don't initially or immediately appreciate it get turned off because they feel like oh this is for like fancy people. Exactly. You know? Like oh they get art, and it's like well no I can look at a wall and I can see, you know, Jackson Pollock and say that's a bunch of bullshit. I could do that. Well, sure, but that's that's the point. Like now, it's I remember going. I remember going to the museum when I was a kid, and I could I could sit still for maybe like twenty minutes before I had to run home and just create. And that's how it affected me, you know. Like you know, it's sort of you don't sit in math class and go, I could do this. Right. You know, you don't sit in the back of biology and go, Wow, it all makes sense now. But like when you're learning art or you're seeing things that people have created by their own free will, it just inspires you to go do the same. Um, so I think in a paying it forward sense, art is so important because it sort of just says, there are no rules, go make your own rules and go do it yourself. You know? No matter where you join the world in progress, like we now join this story in progress, right? wherever you dive in to this linear thing, which is life, you're always gonna feel like you want to get as much, if you're a certain type of person, you're always going to want to feel like, well, I really want to accomplish as much as I possibly can. But I think it's important that you realize you're like this speck, you know, and if you can just push the envelope a little bit, it's, it's that much further down the road for the next, the next speck to come along and push it more. And I think it's a natural, it's, everyone wants change overnight. Everyone wants everything overnight. Not even overnight. They want it right. Overnight is yesterday. too long. Everyone wants it no, yesterday. Overnight is too long. <laughs> yeah, overnight is too, far too long. <laughs> so, I think it's human nature. To, patience is uh, is not a virtue that, that that everyone should be proud of. You know, it's like you you want it in certain things. You want to be impatient with because you want you want to move things forward and and expedite you know, a, 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 an organic process, but you, some things you just can't. So you just have to sort of, um, you just have to sort of babysit these things until it's time to pass it on to the, the next, you know, um, the next generation or the, you know, the next stewards of, of, the next stewards of change, you know, whoever's gonna 
pass the baton and now, all right, you did a good job, old man, I'll take it from here. Right. And hopefully they don't fuck it up. I'm inspired by, by self-made people, you know, people who just sort of kick down the doors and, and figure it out once they're inside and, and sort of just, um, you know, keep reinventing themselves, you know, and, and sort of, you know, pack as much life as you can into every, every day, every year as you possibly can. And, and um, you know, not, um, you make sure that you never get too comfortable and you never, you're always looking to, you're never resting on your laurels, you know, like you create something, you know, that's your, you're proud of or, or you, you accomplish or achieve something that, that you're really striving for and you just have to go and keep doing that or else you die, you know, I mm. think that. Um, do you think that's learned or do you think that is something you're born with? I don't know. I mean, I, I read a lot of this guy, Rupert Sheldrake, mm -hmm. and, and he talks about like, you know, you know, the, the pigeons who, who learn over time that the guy puts cat food under the mailbox. And now these pigeons that are born in this little area, they know that the cat food, you know, so I think some of it is, is learned. Um, but some of it is also, you know, how you're, how you're raised, I guess, too. And, and if, you know, I mean, my parents were very, supportive of just me doing my own thing like you know once they saw that i wasn't getting involved in like drugs and drinking and whatever they were sort of like well he can't really fuck anything else up so if he wants to go on tour and be in a band and and sort of find himself then i guess he'll be okay oh yeah i mean that you know having you know having um lyrics that i wrote mean that much to someone to get them tattooed on them was mind blowing in itself. We used to have like fans at our fans, you know, people at our shows would come up to us and say, "Hey, look at my thing! I got your lyrics tattooed." I never knew what to say. I was just like, "Cool," and I'd like run backstage, you know, like I wouldn't know how. To, I couldn't, I couldn't process that, you know, like right. lyrics that I wrote when I was 16 on some kid's chest, you know, it was like, "What?" So then, after 9/11. Um, a lot of like police and firemen started getting it. They sort of they sort of borrowed it and sort of made it their own thing, and it sort of became this larger than life thing that people had no idea of its origin. Um, and then when the when the soldiers started getting it, it was like it took on its a whole new you know meaning. It's pretty cool to see you know something that you create that can sort of get co-opted by. Society, you know, it's like well, so art is right. You make it and then you put it out in the world, and, and it's yeah, it's yours. It's, that's art, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. You make it and it's yours to um, decipher and and um, take what you want out of it. In life, what we do for ourselves, we take with us to the grave, right? Like we die with that. But like what we do for others and the way we touch others, that lives on forever because it's it's you know, exponentially affects people and, and um, in ways that you can't even imagine. Like my mother's, my mother's a teacher and she has like a coffee mug that says um, something about like nothing you ever do for children is wasted or something. And it's so true because it's, it's like, I see it with, with, my, with my mom who's taught generations, like she's teaching like the children of kids she's taught, you know, so the children, right, yeah. So, um, to see that, it's just crazy, because they all, you know, everyone remembers their pre-K or kindergarten teacher, and you're touching these people's lives, and that just gets, it gets paid forward over and over and over and over, you know, exponentially, which is, that's what you, I think, you can only hope to, to hope for, and really the only thing you can leave as a legacy like that is something creative, like art.